Good evening, everyone. I'm Brian Allen. I'm Andrea Anderson. The South Dakota Lottery has released its annual report, and it shows that $1.1 billion was put into video lottery machines across the state. That rise in video lottery and all forms of gambling prompted us to take a closer look at gambling and addiction and the effect that it's having. Cordell Wright sat down with a treatment center representative to get an inside look in our top story here tonight. <laughs> We see a lot of gamblers who come in and they are really hurting. Most of them are in debt anywhere from $20,000 to $100,000 to a million dollars in the hole. It's very challenging for compulsive gamblers to even fathom digging out of the financial hole that they've dug for themselves. Matt Walls is a representative at Keystone Treatment Center, which has the only inpatient gambling treatment program in the state. If a person starts gambling and they really, really like the feeling and they really love the effect and they can't wait to do it again, there's a higher likelihood that there could be a problem. At Keystone, they see patients for a variety of addictions, including meth, heroin, and opioids. Walls explains that gambling can create similar neurological effects. For compulsive gamblers, when, when they're gambling, the same chemicals are going off in their brain as if they were high on cocaine. Wall says his patients oftentimes reach a point of desperation where they feel like they have to make one of two choices, committing crimes. They look at property crimes, burglary, they look at uh, robbery or embezzlement from their employer. Or they'll choose to take their own life. Gambling has a rate of suicide that's, that far exceeds rates of suicide for all other addictions. But meth is also a concern. When Walls asks meth addicts where they get it, gambling is usually involved. They state that they usually go into a casino, wait for their meth dealer to show up, uh, they buy their meth, and they'll use it either on premises or in the car or somewhere, and then they'll often go back into the casino and continue gambling. It's why Walls says continuing to have the conversation about gambling addiction is so important. If we in South Dakota are concerned about addressing crime, suicide, meth, then it's incumbent that we continuously reevaluate our relationship with gambling. In Sioux Falls, Cordell writes, Dakota News Now. If you or a loved one have been affected by gambling addiction and you want to reach out for some help, you can find a list of resources with this story on our Dakota News Now website.